It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Can you address the detractors that thought, you know, since you're leaving, you're a lame duck, that this just wasn't going to happen in the chase? Well, I mean, we... We've, we've been, it's no secret we've been a little bit off all year, but there's been opportunities, like we mentioned earlier, that, that we've had opportunities to win and something's happened, and it was nice today. I mean, you look at all the things that happened on the racetrack, and we weren't a part of it, so um, you know, we finally had one of those days where everything went right for us, and, and um, you know, we were able to finish it off. So, um, man, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's been a lot of nights going home at night going, man, what do I have to do and how long is this slump going to be and what do we have to do to get out of it? And, uh, you know, at least for the next six days I get to get to say that I'm out of it. So uh, just happy for the results today and happy that we finally got a little luck on our side. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Tony, we've all known about the yellow line rule since you at Daytona in 2002, but today Regan was talking about Something about that he had understood based on the truck race yesterday and all that there was word going around the garage that if you went below the line after you could see the flagman that, quote, anything goes. Did you hear any such thing? And could you just sort of give us your interpretation of the, of the whole matter as it unfolded? You know, I, all I'm going to say about that is I never, they never said that in the driver's meeting. So uh, uh, I don't know that it was ever understood anywhere, that, but... You know, I sat in the driver's meeting like everybody else did, and, and I know that somebody's got a copy of it. So if you hear that in the driver's meeting, then, then uh, you know, I guess we'll be all, all stand corrected. But that's not the way I understood it. Anything else from the press box? Yes, we have one more question. Bob Margolis, Yahoo Sports. Tony, earlier Jimmy Johnson said that really the only offensive tool you have left with this new car on these tracks is to hit somebody and, and – meet up with him and push him forward. Is, is your assessment of that the same thing? Uh, pretty much. I mean, the, with the way the bumpers match up, I mean, it, it keeps us from uh, jacking each other up like we had the problems with with the old cars, uh, you know, with the slanted noses and the tails being higher than the noses were. Uh, you know, the front bumpers are flat and the rear bumpers are flat and they're the same height. So it, it lets you um, be able to get on a guy's bumper like that and, and be able to push him around here. And, you know, when they repaved this track about three years ago, uh, I mean, uh, you aren't going to find two and a half miles of asphalt that's as smooth as this is. I mean, they don't, they don't pave the highways this smooth. So um, that's what allows us to be able to do that is because we got a surface that's so nice that, uh, you know, handling's not a, an issue. It's a matter of just when you can get those two cars locked together like that and the car in the back doesn't have any air resistance on it at all, uh, it, it's like shifting another gear when you can get to the to the back bumper of somebody. And that's what I was I was happy when Regan got to the bumper of me on the back stretch uh, like Nemechek did on the, the restart before. But um, I was hoping he would stay on it all the way till we got to the line. But when that's that's why it did worry you too at the same time that when they get off that bumper and you get that far ahead, that, that lets that group behind you catch up. Okay, we're going to go right here and then the back. Hey, Regan Smith uh, said after the race that he thought you consciously drifted down toward the yellow line. Just your comment on that. Darn right I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I've, I've lost Daytona 500s. I've lost races here at Talladega because somebody blocked. I mean, that's that's just the name of the game. Today's, today's race wasn't any different than the last 19 races that I've run here. There's always been people blocking. So, you know, the, the nice thing is I was actually on the right end of it this time. So, trust me, I've got no regrets about what I did. I did exactly what I needed to do to win the race, and, and it worked out. In the back. Around the master zone, MC. Uh, with eight to go, you went into turn one just after a rest or I guess you broken away, and you said this is not good. What was going through your head about uh, or what you just mentioned? You know, I've, I've lost these races a lot this way. Well, I, I knew when Nemechek got behind us like that, I knew that we could get away. But the, the thing is, when you get the when you get that second car to the bumper like that, that that car's not getting any air to the radiator, so that temperature gauge just climbs. And he can stay on there as long as you want, but there's going to be a point where he's going to he's going to get the water temperature so high that the motor lays down and it's pushing water out of the the um, you know vent tube and uh, 
you know, I knew that we were going to get so far ahead that it was going to let that whole line of cars, we were going to be sitting ducks up there, and, and that's what happened. It, it got to where uh, I, I think it was Elliot Sadler got to the high side of Nemechek in one and two, and we were able to get up and block and, and get a push from Elliot and protect our spot there. But um, that's that's what I knew was not going to be a good situation. And there's nothing you can do as the front guy. You can't just mash on the brakes and slow down because you got a guy pushing you. So uh, if you want to get wrecked, you can mash on the brakes. But... Uh, you know, I was better off just riding it out, and, and then at that point, you just got to watch the mirror because you know the train's coming. Okay, question over here. Hey, Tony, uh, Doug Turnbull, WSB Radio. You're seventh in the points now, six races to go, 203 out. I mean, last week, I think most of us, and maybe even the week before, were saying Pro probably don't have a shot at it. Do you view these remaining races as, hey, I have a shot at this championship, or is it really just one race at a time, or are you just kind of going them all out? We're not even halfway through the chase, so anything can happen still. I mean, the, the thing I've learned with this is until they say mathematically that you're out, you're, you still got a shot. So um, you, you never know what's going to happen from week to week. And this, this race, obviously, is one of those that you know that big things can happen more so than at the other tracks. But, um, you know, you just... We got to take it one week at a time right now. Questions from the press box? No other questions. More questions downstairs. Claire, right here. Congratulations, Tony Clevery Lang, XM Satellite Radio. Any ambiguity at all in that rule? Uh, uh, Any what? Ambi I'm <laughs> well, from Southern Indiana, oh, sir. You just got to use smaller words. Okay. Is there anything in the rule? that could define it better uh, uh, because uh, Reagan said that he uh, would have asked a question in the driver's meeting even, but he didn't feel he was a veteran, should be doing that. He kind of held back just maybe for a second. Is there anything in it that is unclear, uh, not, not as you understand it in this race today, is there anything that should be clearer about it or is it I mean, I've I've sat in those meetings since they had the yellow line rule and, and the, one, the first thing that David Hoots always says is this is your warning. You know, the, the driver's meeting is your warning about staying above the yellow line and racing above the yellow line. So um, it's always preceded by, you know, aggressive driving zones, and they always say that that starts with the drop of the green flag to the end of the checkered flag with emphasis in the corners and the triable. So it, it's it's been the same speech since they came up with that rule. They've never wavered off of it. Um, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Any other questions downstairs for Tony Stewart? All right, Tony, congratulations. Thank you, guys.